Welcome to Vision Plus, a program featuring a positive outlook, dealing with everyday situations of marriage, children, and business. Believing Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Teacher, author, speaker, delighting audiences from New York to Sacramento with a heart and message for the people today. Bonnie would like to remind you of the 800 number on the screen. Please feel free to call at any time throughout the broadcast and share your concerns. Leave your prayer request and someone will pray with you. And now, teacher, author, and speaker, Bonnie. Hello and welcome. You're watching Vision Plus. If you remember, some of you, Gladys, some of you that watch all the time, uh, t remember when we did a couple of shows on bullying. Well, we're going to do another one and expand that subject just a little bit. But this is being taped, actually, the Christmas time, a little bit before the holidays. And we want to wish you a very Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays or Happy Hanukkah, uh, Happy New Year. Happy 4th of July, whenever you happen to be watching this, because it is on the internet and it goes globally, uh, we want to talk about women and our issues and also uh, some things about uh, living alone. And a person I've known for at least a decade or more uh, is here with us today, and she has seen some things firsthand, as I have also. Uh, welcome to Kathy Letiri. Good morning. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. Well, tell us a little bit about your story about the 85-year-old person. What happened just in the last few days? First, I'll say thank you to Bonnie because she is the one who is responsible for my being able to get back to school and achieve my doctorate. So, That's morning, right. Dr. Bonnie. <laughs> Good morning, Dr. Kathy Letiri. <laughs> And in, in, in my doctorate work and in my follow-up for my doctorate work, I am a social researcher. And I do almost any kind of social research. Step family is one of my things, but I'm really strong into protection of women. And I don't necessarily call it women's issues. I call it protection of women. And I will tell a story of what I'm referring to now. Six weeks or so ago, I heard a story about a couple each in their 80s, early 80s, I think. The husband had COPD and was weak and has a bit of a heart problem. The wife, also in her 80s, had hurt her leg, and she was in a cast. Well, the husband fell on a, on a tile floor in their kitchen, and the wife was there, and the husband would not let her call an ambulance. So herein comes the problem. How does it happen that there's an 80-year-old man on the floor telling his wife not to call the ambulance? And she doesn't. Where is this supremacy that, I'm truly not a man-hater, and I'm not a man-basher. I love my husband, Paul. However, where does it come in that men have such power over women? They've been married 50-something years. They're intelligent. They're educated. They're, they're Christian. But he has such a bullying and such an authority effect over her that for six hours she doesn't call an ambulance. Finally, he gave her permission to call the ambulance. Then I learned that one lung had collapsed, he was not breathing well, and had he been another hour, he would have died. Well, with such stubbornness, I kind of have opinions on that, but not a good thing to say. So then he goes to the hospital, and he's there for uh, three weeks in and out of ICU. They found some other problems. And while in the hospital, though, he still expected his wife, rather than the nurses, to take care of him. She gets up with her broken leg, and does so. Finally, he goes into uh, physical rehabilitation, and he took himself out without the doctor's consent. Well, thank goodness the doctors were aware enough at that time. They told the wife she should not go home with him and she should not take care of him. Gratefully, there were adult daughters to take her to live with them. And he, in fact, didn't even know where she was, so I understand. I, I kept up with it 
this was way out of my realm of people, but I kept up with it as well as I could to find out. He has home health care and such, and she is still two weeks later with, with her daughter. What would be if she didn't have a daughter? Mm -hmm. What would be if the doctor didn't say, you can't do this, ma'am, you're hurting yourself? And what would be if she were still with him and in the home and trying to take care of him? And he would still be telling her what to do, and she would still be doing it. Two questions. Why does he think, because he can, that's the obvious answer, we don't need that answer. Why would, why would a husband or a man or a boyfriend or anyone think, or father, think that they should demand of the woman in the life, the wife, the daughter, to follow such directions, and why would she be so frightened of him, of when he does get, certainly he's not going to do anything while he's on the floor, but he is going to get up, and he is going to be okay in a few weeks, maybe, maybe not, but he still has this authority over her. Why does she do it? Why does he do it, and why does she think she has to follow his direction? Well, I think that uh, could it be also that our heritage is, our Christian heritage and Jewish heritage, uh, is that the man's head of the family, and sometimes he takes that controlling spirit uh, a lot farther. Now, the wife is supposed to love her husband and do things, and I think that that's carried too far many times, too. I know that my mom and dad were very much in love with each other, and at the same time, I remember at, she had been a teacher. She had gone to college. He hadn't. She had been a teacher, a school teacher. And then uh, she, after five, the five of us were in school, she said she had gotten, she had been in tune with a, in, uh, a university. She had a full scholarship. For all four years, to even though she had gone to college, uh, it had been some years past. So she got the full scholarship, and she said to him when Joelle and my younger brother went to school, she said, I have this full scholarship. They will pay for everything, all fees, everything, and I would like to go back and get my teaching certificate upgraded and, and so that I can go back to teaching. Well, when they were younger, she had driven the car, but things had changed, and he happened to have straight shift. She didn't, hadn't driven that. So he said to her after some moments of silence, well, I don't know who's going to drive you because they're, they were 13 minute, uh, miles away from the college the university, and she said she was very quiet would not say anything back to him, but she told me later that something died inside of her that day, and she had never stood up to him in all of our life together. Well, maybe one time she stood up to him when uh, uh, we used to have pit cotton and chop cotton and had rice as, and, as did, as did my and the German prisoners worked on our farm. Uh, anyway, and I was apparently not picking like he thought I should be, and I was pulling these little things off of a piece of, uh, it was like a bark off of a little limb, and it was so much fun to pull that off. So he grabbed... But you were losing money by not pulling that <laughs> cotton. Not, that's right. <laughs> so he grabbed a cucklebur. Now, that is a big... The one was very large. And he pulled it out of the ground and hit me over the head with that. Well, I had long <laughs> red hair down to my waist. Well, I put my bonnet back on, finished the time, and at lunchtime went home and pulled that bonnet <laughs> off. And those cucklebirds were all the way into my scalp by putting the bonnet back on. You pushed it in. I pushed it way inside. That was the only time in... Uh, the years I knew them, and they were married over 50 years, that she ever, she flew 
up and said, Bill, why did you do that? Because she had to cut my hair t- to the scalp. To, and when, that was her pride and joy, my long red hair. Yet that heaven forbid <laughs> that he, a woman should lose her temper or let it go. People don't lose their temper. They let it go. That's right. Heaven forbid so, a woman should do that. And I just, uh, so I, I thought, man, all of us five were just, our eyes were as big as saucers saying, you can actually say something back to dad yes and, uh, a woman can say something back to husband or a daughter can say something back to dad now and she didn't do it calmly and that's the an uh, answer we have to do the that hard calmly. part but and, what happens then when they do yes i mean is there a greater repercussion is well, there a in, stronger in my response? family she wouldn't have uh, he wouldn't physically hurt her he got enough his way enough by just uh, abusing her verbally controlling. and so controlling. I remember one time we had a struggle uh, trying to pay for a farm and getting five kids through school. And uh, so she, um, she, he came home driving a new truck, yellow <laughs> truck. This is back in the 50s or 60s, somewhere in there. It was so bright yellow, you'd think if there had been Jeff Gordon, it was one of his, something like that. With red, bright red, brighter red than your uh, jacket, uh, sideboards that went all the way up the ton and a half truck because they could call a uh, higher mm-hmm. car. That was another time I saw her, but she didn't really say anything uh, to him about it other than I'm not riding in that to church. So uh, that was two it, times. It does, it does work when the woman does stand up. Of course, he kept Calmly the truck, the trick. and well, eventually course. she did ride in the truck to church. Since Bottom that was the line, only. he 99.9% percent gets his way mm-hmm. however if and it's not easy and it takes courage and it takes some education if the woman will respond in an adult manner i'm an adult too i don't know how many times those words i hear i'm an adult too and it needs to be the reminding little bitty personal story here i'm a little 15 years younger than my husband and he's the he's the Italian family and he is the macho Italian man well and that I was 33 and he was 48 and I grew up without a father I know I was always looking for a father figure and a husband and and he was the perfect one because he had six children anyway therein lies the problem I became one of the children for a while I did But when I got ready to grow up and when I started college and when I started doing real outside lively work and being in in the counseling and the mediation field, it didn't work so well. It it was it was a a definite shift in in the allowing of me to the relationship not allowing of me by any means. There was no allowing. I did. Mm-hmm. But it was a recognition of differences. Mm-hmm. And and at that point, then it's like we have to go on and be the adults. It was a change. It was a mm-hmm. change in the relationship, a far better one, of course. If women could have some courage to say, I need to do this, I need to be able to do that, I need to know about this, and the main thing are the finances. The yes. main thing. I remember you called me several years ago. Someone's just learned that her husband was was uh, terminal and and you said you wanted to interview her and what did I think would be one of the main things to speak with her about knowing that just having learned her husband is terminal and I just brightly and clearly and confidently said find the money because if you don't know where the money is if he is still not okay not mentally competent not physically competent your whole world is gone, lady. You have to know how to follow yourself. And if he is such the controller, or if he has become just a mean, nasty old man by that time, he doesn't care. So you need to be your self-advocate. Uh, whether you're in the hospital, you need to be your self-advocate. At home, in your work situation, you need to know what you need to do and do it. Be the adult and do it. Mm-hmm. Easy to do, yeah, not I mean, a chance. But You have to know if there's life insurance. What we have done, well, I actually pay for uh, one life insurance, just have it taken out of my 
uh, Social Security, and uh, you have to know where all the papers are. I actually have mine in papers. one bundle that shows uh, birth and uh, anything that has to do with uh, finances because of that conversation and also my friend, Lloyd Burgess in Texas, she uh, told us that that's the way she ke- kept up with everything. Now, in her case, it was a, a divorce, but uh, you still ha- need to know. And if you've been married to that person for over 10 years, you will get their Social Security, too, or some portion of it. And therein I, would lie the other thing. If you're married seven, eight years, nine years, and it's so bad, stick it out another year, lady. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had mentioned COPD, and I had a person on Jeff Dowdy recently that, Uh, talked about COPD uh, and the heart problem. Why don't you tell everyone exactly what that stands for? The simplest thing to say is it's it's a pulmonary problem. Uh, Getting enough oxygen into the brain is, or through the whole blood system, but the the lack of oxygen to the brain would create a, a dementia effect which would be totally unrealistic in terms of taking care of everything properly, thinking clearly, knowing what's to follow what. So given any kind of, whether it's your husband or your wife, you need to know what responses come from whatever illness there is, what to expect from it, what the long-term prognosis is, and where all the papers are. Uh huh. And I know that I just heard a television show about we always hear if you will exercise eat right which means don't overeat and uh, get you know get a lot of uh, a, a good attitude about your life and this person went on to explain that the secret of exercising is getting the oxygen to your brain breathing. that is breathing that you could just exercise like Tony has done in the past by just uh, marching in place you don't, it would be deep wonderful breaths. Just always. Deep breaths. Just take deep breaths. There's a whole program on deep breathing. In fact, uh, I had bought the tape. I wish I remember I could that. Remember. I remember that. <laughs> and it was just a matter of deep breathing for uh, 20, 10, 20, 30 so minutes. So we paid $49 for a program <laughs> to tell us how to breathe. <laughs> hey, if it works. Uh, I did want to say that you have to get the guts to do it. And I call it doing it with fun. You had mentioned that's, that's something because. Great. That's what? A, that's a great. They acronym. did a TV show just recently about the teenagers and the schools around here have bullies. Very bad. A lot of people are taking them, their children, out of uh, schools because of the bullying. Because they are uh, busing uh, people in from the projects and other areas that they're uh, they're bullying the ones that live in the area where the schools are. And one of the things that uh, I recommend is what i call fun that's good that fun and that's focus on what you want to accomplish uh that is if you want to have a car that doesn't have yellow sideboards and uh i mean yellow car with red sideboards you need to stand up and focus on what you'd like to accomplish if your spouse is spending too much money uh, I know you said while your husband's in uh, rehab that the, <laughs> the, the credit the, card bill is down four hundred dollars because he's not in the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to you have to focus. Okay, honey bun, we have to lower our groceries if we're going to lower our credit card bill and uh, eat. Uh, I know he's an incredible cook. Or oh, excuse me, he'd be a chef if he allowed a, a, <laughs> us to say that. Right. But you have to focus on getting your bills out. If that's what you want to do, buy an older car if you have to. Uh, sell the house you're in and get a less expensive house. Whatever it takes. Right now they're giving that $8,000 if you do buy a house. So some of you that are renting need to buy a house. You Isn't can buy it cheaper. Truth? And also you get $8,000 on your credit. And Alabama has some step-up programs that will give you more money even for your closing costs the you in fun you focus now the, let me let me jump into your to your okay. uh you focus. said focus on the goal i say and and it is not uh, improper to be you can't be selfish and self-centered but you need to be self-aware here again you need to take care of yourself so focus on self that's right what you need 
what you, not just what you want, but what you really need and what needs to be for the family, for the whole um, circle that, that you're in with your extended family, with your adult children. And stop giving to the adult children. They're adults. Let them take care of themselves. The U stands for unglue from the way you lived in the years past. No matter what has happened in the past, you can stand up to that person. Do like some of the, if it's teenagers or young people or entry-level children, kindergarten, take your children out of that school, put them in another school or private school, and uh, Huntsville happens to have the most wonderful school. Number eight in the country, and that's New Century Technology High School. They will accept people from anywhere in the whole Huntsville, Madison area. And they have a, a code of ethics, a code of honor, a code of responsibility. Dress. And dress, if you don't follow and that. And they're positive. Yes, and it's paid a lot of our... Uh, so therein lies the question would be, why, why do parents and students think that in any public school they can just act any way they want to? Well, because where, where does if this they, come in? Oh, if you you're keep... violating my rights. Now, let me see. The guy yesterday had a gun here. He's going to grow up to be an abuser, maybe a serial killer. But, oh, no, we can't abuse anyone's rights by having him go through a detector or having to say, son, I understand someone told me yesterday you had a gun in school. Ah, the parent uh -huh. comes down and you've got another problem. Well, I, one of the recent movies was telling about this girl was in front of Congress, and she, you may have seen it, and she said uh, she was going to defend our rights and what we believe in. And she said, that she went to get a hair c a cut and color, and they just like were looking at, we're the senators and congressmen, you're going to tell us about your haircut. But she said the woman ruined her hair, made it frizzy, and she, the color was horrible. She said she was right there. <laughs> the woman was fixing her hair while she was doing Why that. Why did she say something? When she didn't say anything. We've got to say something while it's going on. Exactly. We watched the Thomas, Thomas Kincaid movie, and this uh, mother, Thomas's mother, wanted to buy uh, some things for the family. Hope I don't have two movies mixed up. Doesn't matter. The idea was she went and her didn't stay with her husband because I'm not re recommending that. But I do sometimes. Sometimes. Anyway, she took her jewelry and pawned it so she could have the money to do things. Now she ended up with uh, a year later with being able to get her things back again. From But we have to do whatever it takes. I tell my people when I teach them uh, to be den wits. D-I-N-W-I-T. Do it now, whatever it takes. If you're being bullied, if you're uh, headed toward death or dis dis uh, destruction, you want to be safe. And when do you start all this? You start now. it with calm calmness, and you do it now. So what we're trying to say, whether it's the holiday season, and what the holiday season is one of the worst times. Depression, suicide. Yes, the, I call them all the, the D's in life. They, they Not only the theft, and I think somebody stole my boots. I can't even find them. I, maybe I hid them <laughs> under the bed. Under I don't the know. bed. <laughs> uh, except I have a water bed, so I couldn't do that. But anyway, we have to take charge of who we are, make a decision. Decision. I call it the goals. I taught a class just this past week, and we talked about the goals for the new year, the long-range goals, the short-range goals. If you want to take care of yourself and not be bullied anymore, and I call it women and our issues, and you had a right. better name, the well, awareness, just awareness, being aware. Just be aware. And, and as you are in a marriage, when you're aware early in the marriage that this is not going well, that there's a control factor, See, now, I am an advocate of divorce. I do not believe that God intended his daughters to be abused in any manner. Along with that, Well, I'm not an advocate of, of divorce. However, when I was 16 years old, uh, we didn't have, you didn't go with the guys then. If you had one to have sex, you got married. So then that didn't work because he got another woman pregnant. So, and, so then you so, get a divorce. God does not intend for his sons or daughters to be unhappy. God does not intend for anyone to be abused. God does not intend for anyone no. of any nation or, or culture to be abused. It just comes in the nature and the culture. When you are in America, 
you are in America and you can take care of yourself and there are places to go to be taken care of to help you regain your ability to take care of yourself be it education be it self-confidence be it help with the children then when you do something like that you need to take the legal step that has to be to follow through with now I'm not saying anytime you have an argument or if you just don't like it anymore you need to work it out you need to maintain that covenant that you made that promise that uh, legal and uh, Christian promise okay so coming with that but God doesn't want his children to be abused and 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 when one has abused another that is the breaking of that covenant there's the breaking of that marriage vow and it's kind of the same in a family uh one of my students this past week was his daughter's a cpa but she had gotten on drugs the uh legal drugs from the doctor and couldn't function anymore and he had the guts to put to put her down to downtown mission downtown mission but at least it was a place she could go and be safe and rehabilitate yes and there are so many places here uh that you can go and if you need to know any of those places just dial that number you see running across the screen and this is all across the united states we we primarily and, focus on and the here, world but uh-huh. it, it is everywhere and to be able to do that uh, and if you need to go underground to take care of yourself, that can be done. If you need help, uh, well, it could just be done. Just yes, it can. can be done. And uh, of course, I think you're giving good, up your big house, you're giving the... up your Gucci's, you're giving up, you know, if that's <laughs> well, the issue. But in, this, in the case of the 80-year-olds, yes. uh, that, that she, she is likely to live with her children now. Uh huh. Well, in the Bible says for the older women to mentor the younger, the younger women, women. women, so... Kathy and I are volunteering our time to mentor the younger women if necessary. So <laughs> I think call we that walk number around running. doing that all the time anyway. <laughs> and uh, so because we want you to have a happy year this year. We want you. And you know, it's amazing if you show a lot of love to your spouse and a lot of respect for your children and use that tough love like my friend did that put his daughter at the downtown mission. Boy, that's got to be hard to do if you're an architect, real estate, doctor, law all your merchant yes, chief, yes. whatever it is. And we are so proud that you joined us today along with Kathy Latiri and Tony Libhart. Uh, what final words would you have to say? Now, don't forget fun. Focus on what you want to achieve. Focus you on it. Blue, Be aware. And Take start care of now. yourself. Start now today. Exactly. If you want us to help you, we will counsel with you. Well, yeah, yeah, sure. We could do that. Uh-huh. Um, I, would, I would add to that to the younger women you know what you're doing. You know what he is. You know what it's like. You can see it. The the teenagers, the 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 abuse in teenage relationships is rampant. Get out. He mm-hmm. says he'll kill me. No, he won't. He's really a chicken and he's really a weakling mm-hmm. to be treating anyone in that manner anyway. And so some of these tell girls. Someone, oh, they don't even tell. They just, oh, he loves me. I know me. one girl that could have a... A scholarship in Tennessee and North Carolina, but because for boyfriend being here, she said oh, I would go I'm if they, I could take him with me. How, 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 however, she can't get a scholarship at uh, UAH and some other places because, uh, for whatever reason, and this I'm not is the sure, guy that's, that's keeping her from her. getting her education. That's right, and, and he's he going have his he's going to be gone in no time, and he's jealous that she can have an education that's and that right. he doesn't. You're right. Let us be know aware. what we can tell us your story. Call, email, look at the website, whatever it takes. Tell us your story, and we'd like to have you on us. And thank you, Tony Libhart. And also, we want to thank uh, Kathy Latiri and her handsome husband, Paul Latiri, for giving us the time to do this, and you for watching it. Thank God you. bless you. Bless you.